<laughs> Laura, no. That's not cute. No, I can Hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have some technical difficulties, so we're going to do it together. Yeah. Um, so that's why we're wearing masks. Um, hopefully, you can hear us. Um, so give us just a few minutes so people can come in, and we will get started in three minutes. So just be patient with us. Okay, great. We'll start in a couple minutes. We're just getting prepared. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm the internet wasn't working great, so we're going to do the conversation together. Um, more intimate, I guess. More intimate, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so here we are. Um, I'm actually going to just start um, and briefly introduce Bakehouse and the program, and then we can get started with, with the good stuff. So uh, welcome to our virtual program in conversation with Amanda Linares, uh, presented by Bakehouse Art Complex. Thank you for joining us. My name is Laura Novo, and I'm the Curatorial and Public Programs Associate here at the Bakehouse Art Complex. The Bakehouse is a nonprofit organization founded in 1985 by artists for artists in a formal industrial era, formal industrial art deco era bakery. It provides studio residencies, infrastructure, and community to over 60 local artists. Our mission is to address the need for affordable live, live work and workspaces from artists in Miami, in Miami's urban core. For the ongoing and critical support we receive, the Bakehouse would like to thank its private and public sponsors, including the Knight Foundation, the Paris Family Foundation through Crearte, and the Miami Foundation, Miami-Dade County, and the Department of Cultural Affairs, and the State of Florida and its Division of Cultural Affairs. I would like to thank the Wiley Family Foundation, Agriman LLP as well. I am grateful to Bakehouse's Executive Director, Kathy Leff, and my colleague, Ricardo Moore, um, I'm also very grateful to artist and friend Amanda Linares, who has allowed me to bug her countless times and indulge me with many conversations about her work and her practice. Uh, and before we begin the program, we're going to show three short videos of the artist books that accompany Amanda's installation between islands and peninsulas. Uh, this will be helpful, particularly for those of you that have not been able to see the installation in person. Uh, so you have a better understanding of what they look like and how they're constructed. Um, so please feel free to ask questions or share comments in the chat box to the right hand side of the screen. And once again, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, follow us on Instagram and Facebook uh, for information on our future virtual programming and Bakehouse Artist updates. So let's get started with these beautiful videos that Amanda has created for us. Um, and Amanda, if you want to yeah, kind of talk through the books a little bit while I show them, uh, feel free. Well, first and foremost, uh, thank you everybody that has turned in with us <laughs> for today. Um, I feel like this, I mean, platforms like this one are really good, especially for times like this with COVID. I know a lot of people haven't been able to come here to the bakehouse for different circumstances and they haven't been able to see the exhibition. So right now we're gonna give you like a better, you know, like view uh, and insight of what the exhibition is about. So we're gonna start with Tulsi Igual. This is the book about Cuba with a cover made out of concrete. The pictures were taken in Cuba, actually. So they're uh, my own archives. And this uh, first pages that you see are actually newsprint. Um, I wanted to have a kind of a vintage kind of look to it because, you know, I'm talking about the past. 
um, and especially my mother language. The cutouts that you just saw that I flipped, uh, they actually represent um, like uh, like the the the, the platform um, of my house in Cuba. Um, and for this book specifically, I use text from uh, a really well known um, movie called um, Memorias de su Desarrollo, Memories of Underdevelopment. Um, that was actually filmed in 19, well, released in Cuba in 1969 or 68? 68, 68, 68, 68 yeah. exactly. So eight years after the revolution. Um, and they kind of like give this whole idea of what the revolution in Cuba was about. So that was the first book there. Um, let me open up the second one. This one is Agua Salada, um, salt water, and it's about the sea as a connector and divider for um, Cuba, the island, and Miami, the peninsula. Um, and it's about the connection that, uh, especially a lot of people that live in an island, like in Cuba, feel connected with the sea because it's really the only like way, I mean, besides air, of course, because you can like take airplanes now, but it's uh, one of the, you know, more like um, tangible way that you have in order to cross uh, the, the, the island. Um, and it's also a place to like, you know, relax uh, and, and reflect um, and meditate and do offerings. For example, I keep here, I use the, the image of, of Chum. Um, there's also, of course, a relationship with the sea, with Yamaya, but I uh, chose to, to choose Ochun because She's the patron of the of the country, uh, and I feel like he has a lot of relationship with everything for Cubans in there. Um, and then the page in the middle that uh, that I flipped that has like this grid is actually a wax paper, as well as the the image of the of the Virgin, um, kind of like uh, going with this metaphor of like lighting a candle and like making your offerings, blessings. And then for this book, I use text uh, from one of the poems of Jose Martí, uh, uh, the El Apostol de Cuba. <laughs> He's a poet and also a hero in my country. Um, and the poem that I use uh, from him, it's called Odio el Mar, I Hate the Sea. And it's one from his uh, uh, free verses, free poems, to be more specifically. I love getting to see these videos again. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of people were tired. very afraid of touching the books. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and I think it's really good to have a video of the books because if you're afraid, of course, I guess they kind of work as this, um, I don't know, like elements of, um, how can I say, um, like these deities, let's say, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because they contain like very like intimate information. I don't know, like, um, but, and they, some of them look fragile as well. Like the one of the some concrete, even though it's like heavy, heavy <laughs> it kind of looks fra fragile, I think somehow. Um, well, let's go to this one. So this one is uh, the one that focuses on Miami. Mm -hmm. So it's about, you know, my arrival to Miami. Mm -hmm. um, these are pictures that I took once I arrived. So it's like my first uh, explorations uh, in the city, basically. And if you, you know, pay attention, there are, of course, uh, things that connect to the island. Like one of the pictures I have, uh, it shows this store that actually exists in Cuba as well, La Epoca. And uh, in the picture, it says Havana and, and Miami. So there, there are connections, of course, um, with the city and, and Cuba. Uh, but again, uh, the book, once it, it opens completely, there's a certain type of nostalgia and, um, and like lost and where you don't feel that you are at home yet, which is 
the same way that I felt when I came. I was disoriented and, and I wasn't really connecting with the environment mm -hmm. around me. So I was trying to look for that connection. Yeah, and definitely every time that I've confronted the books, I find something new and something different. So it's kind of the viewer's exploration mirrors your personal kind of journey mm -hmm. um, from Cuba to Miami, but also in these specific places. Mm -hmm. um, so speaking a little bit about that, could, could you walk us through your your process uh, for Between Islands and Peninsulas? How did you conceive of the installation? How does the current installation kind of vary from your original idea? I know that this was intended to be your BFA. Yeah. So your, your BFA work presentation. So how does, yes, how does it vary from your original idea of how this was gonna look? Well, how do you show the sketches? No, you, you can have, okay. So, um, so yeah, I, I had some sketches that I shared with Laura because <laughs> we were, she wanted to see more like a visual, uh, you know, concrete idea of like how it was different from what I was thinking. Um, of course, uh, this was part, I mean, it is actually my BFA, even though I feel like now it's more than that because I finished it not actually in Q in, in, in the, at school because of COVID, I finished it actually here at the Bakehouse Art Complex. So, it, it expanded in, from its original idea. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I knew I wanted, I didn't know exactly that I wanted to talk about my diaspora at the beginning. I was trying to look for a topic that would really talk to me personally. And I felt that once I had the idea of, of talking about my own diaspora, about immigration, about the Cuban diaspora, I feel that it was a really good moment for me as a, as a student and as an artist to not only close a chapter with school, but also close another chapter in my life, which was, you know, this whole journey about like coming to a new country where you literally feel like you are reborn uh, because you have to learn so many things again. Um, so um, the idea, one of the first books that I really had that came out really easily to my mind was the one uh, from the sea, actually. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the main things of the installation is that I, I was working with the grid. Uh, I, I, I'm going to read from graphic design. Um, so I needed to connect graphic design somehow with what I was doing. Since I'm always trying to do something a little bit further from my, uh, let's say, limits, Right, I pushed a, a lot from myself in this installation, and I and I wanted to expand the uh, the the concept of the grid. So in design, you use the grid as a way to organize things, whatever. But I wanted to use more like a grid as a way of mapping, as a way of of uh, mapping this jo this journey and creating like a type of ge ge geography, right? Mm -hmm. Like a scattered geography, like that's how how you mentioned in the text. Um, so from there, the whole idea started. I started sketching some things of, about the table. I knew I wanted the grid on the table more specifically. Uh, then I incorporated also the concept of the grid on the books. And uh, for example, as you, um, if you have seen the images, um, I have two grids. I have one grid in the section of Cuba that is on the table. It's like a very tight and like, it's, I'm, I'm like literally playing with scale. So the grid is a little bit more tight, like constrained, small, uh, the way that you kind of feel in an environment like in Cuba. And then the one in Miami is, is a more expanded grid, which is the same way that the books work. So the book in, in Cuba is like, it feels very heavy, very uh, because of that same feeling. And then the one in Miami, there's more expansion. There's like freedom of movement, right? And then the one in, in the sea, the table, it, it wasn't treated, it wasn't laser cut or anything, it's just like, the, the, the wood itself that actually has this really cute patterns that look like water, I would say. It's like the, the way that the wood, uh, the wood came. And for the book uh, in the sea, I actually was working with the dot grid. So if you research a little bit about the grid in history, the dot grid is very connected with the uh, um, creation of uh, manuscripts. So it has a very religious uh, relationship already. And I wanted to work with that because the, the, the sea is something organic. And again, it's a, a place where you go to meditate. So there's a 
I feel like there is a very religious connection with it, a very spiritual connection. Yeah, I feel like some of our uh, viewers, listeners are anticipating <laughs> a lot of what we're saying, which is great. Um, because someone asked about just that, like, what is the significance of the pegs in yeah. Agua Salada and the circular holes in your second book? And um, you just mentioned it has this religious, spiritual connotation. Yeah. And when you and I were looking through the book together, um, what was really nice was that these holes kind of cut out within the book itself, give this kind of notion of like a peek into what's coming, but you can't really see. So you're playing exactly. with this idea of what you want to reveal and what you want to hide. And I like that in between this, mm -hmm. which we'll get to later, but it is, a, you know, a prevalent element or aspect in your work, even though you're using the grid to organize and to kind of find meaning within this, like you said, newness or unknown or so definitely a very interesting way of in integrating the dot grid <laughs> into your into agua salada and um uh, actually someone's asking which is uh was my next question for you anyway um <laughs> i have no i don't have to do any work today so um how did you how did you decide to use the artist books as a medium to express particular pieces or particular places um Mm -hmm. Why, essentially, why the artist book as a way of, of expressing certain ideas versus a painting mm -hmm. or versus any other kind of medium, which I know I've asked you before, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, I think the best answer, the best way to answer that question is, like, it was a personal interest already. I, when I was studying in New World, I actually took a class with an amazing artist and teacher, Carlo, uh, Carol Todaro. And she is the one who showed me what an artist book was, which I did have no idea. Um, and then I guess also the connection of relationship that has graphic design, because in graphic design, you work with a lot of text. There's a lot of typography in it. Uh, so I feel like it was a really good way to uh, merge those two worlds, which is the art world and the design world, right? Also, I have a background in printmaking. I did printmaking in Cuba for four years. So I feel like everything was falling into place when I decided to create this installation with the artist books. I feel like it was a, it was a motivation that was uh, in, in crescendo, basically. And, and this was the culmination. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, and I see that like the artist books allow you to bring in your, you know, your background in printmaking, your background in graphic design, yeah. your interest in all these things into kind of this photography kind of, as yeah, well. This condensed, you know, very beautiful form that I mean your books are are artworks within themselves. So it, you know, it it's an interesting medium to And another another important element I think is also that the books are they tend to be very intimate. Mm -hmm. And I tend to do work that is intimate without even knowing really like I like small scale works or I like the use of paper. Like there's always something intimate or, or poetic that I don't really, or maybe sometimes intentionally during the process, I you know do it, but it's just like the way that my sensibility as an artist works. Um, and, and speaking of the intimacy of the installation, I mean, I, I asked you because the way that you chose to uh, install or show these books was on a table. And a table is a very particular installation mechanism. It's different than a pedestal. It's mm -hmm. different than putting it on in a vitrine. It's so the the table. Not only the artist books kind of call for this intimacy, but the table, the way that you chose to yeah. exhibit the books, adds to that. Right? Like it's a space of connection. It's a space of you know conversation, like conversation. as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And 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 I feel like this. Installation has, has brought a lot of conversation because there's a lot of people, you know, that have experienced somehow things like this, especially here in Miami. I mean, so because there's a lot of, yeah, um, um, immigrants from Cuba, but I even remember uh, one of the days that I passed by here at the Bake House, I actually encountered two ladies with their kids and they were from Russia. And they knew exactly what I was talking about in the installation without even like, you know, telling them. They were like, yes, we totally understand. Like, yeah, definitely Miami is a city 
uh, of diaspora, mm -hmm. you know, it's a city that people come to. So I think that your work is received and understood in a particular way here. Mm -hmm. You know, it might be read or interpreted differently elsewhere, but Miami has a very particular context and a very particular history that, like you said, someone from Russia <laughs> could, under could kind yeah. of understand yeah. what you're trying to express, um, you know, and at the end of the day, like you said, it's something intimate, it's something human. So there's that connection anyway, right? At the, at the basis of it. Exactly. Like they might not know exactly, but it, it's understood. Yeah, there is a message there that goes directly. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, um, I agree with that. Um, so just going back to what we mentioned about this feeling of, of in-betweenness, mm -hmm. of like kind of it, inhabiting this liminal space of neither here nor there, uh, how do you kind of express that in each of the books? Or give, can you give us some examples of how, because your installation is called Between Islands and Peninsulas. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. you know, even though I, I see the function of the grid as a way of organizing your thoughts and your emotions and this kind of, you know, uh, you know, difficult emotions, both in Miami and in Cuba and in between, um, you have a focus of, on that, on, on that space of, of intermediate, like of the intermediate. So could you tell, tell us a little bit of, about how you express that in each book? Um, and, and, and I guess how or, or why you chose to, to focus on that in your title. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, could you just talk a little bit more about that for us? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, first thing I, you know, I think and I have experienced uh, myself is that when you leave your birthplace, Mm -hmm. um you know you you go to a, a different place and it's you're never going to receive it in the same way that you have received your motherland because you were born there so i feel like even though if you try to root yourself again in another place it's never gonna be it, it doesn't gonna have the same essence as the you know your motherland had mm -hmm. because that's where you grew up it's like it's something that you didn't choose but it just happens naturally, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I feel like throughout the whole installation, there's a lot of nostalgia. Even in the book of Miami, there is nostalgia because I mean, I'm 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 32 years old, and <laughs> I lived I lived in Cuba for 24 years. I've only lived here for um, for eight, about two eight, eight years. So there's a huge difference there. I have more memories. I have more history in my motherland than here. So I don't know if I'm going to be feeling the same way when I'm like in my 50s. But for now, that's at the stage that I am. It's like I there are some connections that, yeah, I'm still building and creating here. But I, I don't feel that this is a place that is rooting me. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then the way that I see Cuba right now, it's like, I feel like I, I think about Cuba, but I think about an old Cuba. I think about the Cuba that I lived. So I think about the past. I, I am not connected with Cuba anymore either. Like whatever is going on in Cuba, I only hear maybe from my family members who still live in there, but it's, it's not a place where I, that I'm living or experiencing at the moment. So, you know, it feels like a, like a, like a big dream, right? <laughs> I feel like that's how memories kind of like feel to us. They, they feel like dreams because it's, some, it's something that is gone. They, it's not tangible. It's not something that you're going to recover, right? Um, well, and that's the beauty of memory too, that, you know, if when we revisit, you know, memory is almost like a visitation of, of a past event and it, it it's fluid and it's expansive. So anytime we think of something, it, it it change, you know, it changes a little bit, it very slightly, right? So a memory is not fact or exactly mm -hmm. what happened, but really our impressions of that. Yeah. And I think you capture that, you know, even in the in the pages of Todo Si uh, the image of your mother, which I love, um, it's like blurry. So it's yeah. almost like a memory, like a moment in motion, and like it's like the time, the present is passing you by to become the past. It's like encompassing all these like time frames within one image, um, which I, I think speaks to that idea of like, 
you know, you're, it's, you know, you're living in the present, but also living in the past, especially when you feel like you inhabit two different places and yeah. the place that you are now, like you said, isn't rooting you, isn't, isn't grounding you. Yeah. So it's like you said, this in betweenness and where exactly, where do I go from here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and I feel that's also shown in the way that the books are presented. They feel like this, like, probably islands because mm -hmm. the the tables are so big and there's like these scattered objects right so it's everything a little bit isolated in some sense and and also the the images and the colors are very opaque uh, which is something that I was very interested in um, except for one main color that only has in one section of the of the book in Miami which is red and it's more like that chop, right? Of when you arrive to Miami, like the United States is such a big country and like so overdeveloped. So coming from an under, super underdeveloped country to a, a, this massive place, it was like a big chop for sure. Yeah, you can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have a question. Um, someone's asking about the selection of materials um, for the art books and the element of the table and the installation, which we, we spoke about a little bit already. Um, but the, the use of materials and materiality to express ideas and emotions was something you and I spoke about a lot. Mm -hmm. So can you maybe talk a little bit about your selected materials for each book? Yeah, um, a little bit. So yeah, that yeah. We... yeah, so the book of Cuba, which I already said, it's, it has a cover made out of concrete. So basically the way that that book uh, works I don't know if you remember in the video, there's like this, uh, like a square concrete. That's actually the cover, like the top of the book. So the book, that part is meant to be lifted, right? And then put it on the side and then you can start like facing, passing the pages, but it's heavy. It, and and it kind of feels like a, like a tomb. Like a tomb, yeah. Like a tomb, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So, uh, so it, 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 got, it kind of goes with that emotion of like heaviness, of like the past, of like memories. Um, and, and so yeah, that, that was, I, I knew for sure that the book of Cuba I wanted to do it with concrete because I was already experimenting concrete before with like transferring, they were mainly used as a surface. So I was creating this kind of like a, a, a fragments of concrete and I was transferring images from like old family pictures on top of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew I wanted to work with that. Like I, I feel like one of the things that, of, of like the material that really reminds me of Cuba is concrete because like everything there, even, even, even though it's in ruins basically, and like the houses are very like old and very unstable buildings because you don't know when they're actually gonna fall uh, on you, uh, but everything is made out of concrete. So it, there's like interesting duality of like a very strong uh, material opposed to this very fragile type of environment where the material is not really maintained, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it, it really it creates in you instability. I think one of the things I experienced in Cuba was a lot of instability. And that also happened with the house where I lived in my mom's house. It was very unstable. There was no privacy. We had problems with the architecture of the house. So there was a lot of that. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, those are things that kind of like stay in your memory, especially if you're leaving that as a child. Um, and then, so the book for uh, the sea, it's made out of wood. I wanted something organic again, besides of working with the circle and, and the dot. Um, and I wanted something that would feel a little bit more like lightweight and, and very like um, horizontal to kind of like draw the horizon. Um, and it's like a very uh, silent book, but I'm not gonna talk about that right now. <laughs> And then the book of Miami, I chose uh, plexiglass. I knew I wanted something that would feel a little bit more cheap. And I'm sorry <laughs> to say that. Uh, I feel like it's, it's a book that is very transportable too. Like it's very easy to move to places, which is the same way that I feel when I came. Because once you're out of Cuba, you're like, okay, at least I have freedom of movement, right? 
Um, and and I, I chose that. Well, along with the books, there are some small um, optics or sculptural optics. And uh, I, I chose that because, again, the architecture in here, uh, I remember uh, when I uh, came to Miami uh, in, the, in the apartment where I used to live with my mom and my grandma, um, I knocked on the walls and I was like, why is it ho hollow? Yeah, because it's it's made out of, um, um, a, oh, I forgot the name. The uh, walls in here. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're made out of the, um, I forgot. So you're saying that the walls weren't like, weren't strong, that they weren't hollow? No. That they were hollow. Exactly, like they, were, they were hollow. Okay, okay, yeah. Because here they use a different type of material, right? right? Um, so yeah, so it was like that. Yeah, so like sheet rock <laughs> or like something like that that can be easily exactly. knocked down. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> so that was very impressive to me. I was like, okay, I feel like I'm living in like a, <laughs> in like a, a house made out of cardboard. I don't know. Well, the <laughs> funny thing about that is that you said that even though the, the buildings in Cuba were made out of concrete, that you felt this instability and this kind of plaster know, plaster i'm sorry yeah. i'm sorry it, it just <laughs> yeah it went away with plaster. but then there's also that feeling here but for yeah. different reasons right like this feeling of like you said like you're living in a house made out of cardboard yeah. or like i mean drywall or, or drywall, drywall right? exactly drywall you know um where i don't know the instability is different but it's yeah. still there um one of the objects that i that I used was uh, drywall with a, a top a layer of plaster on top the elements that you have yeah. around the the yeah, book yeah exactly. okay yeah so <laughs> <laughs> so it's it goes with that like I, I i knew i wanted the materials to really transmit what you were going to find in the books mm -hmm. and also because i was designing them you know a book is an object and i wanted them to have this very sculptural feeling mm -hmm. where you could like interact in with with them in different ways depending on the uh in the field uh the place that i was talking about um, so we have a question um, about someone that's actually visited the installation. Um, they say that they approached um, the books as beautiful art objects. How do you feel about the preciousness of the books? Would you sacrifice the art object aspect to make them more approachable? <laughs> as a formal book. <laughs> um, okay, wait, how do you... So I guess what are the challenges yeah, or yeah, limitations yeah. of, of? I mean, to be honest, this was my first big uh, project, and you know, and my first big project with artist books because I've created artist books before, but I never had them in an exhibition for people like to touch and interact. So this was my first uh, big project where people will interact with the the work, and yeah, I mean, I was scared. At the beginning because I didn't know and that was one of the questions that uh, I had uh, myself and also some like um, professors that helped me and, and asked me like you know once you put the the work out there it's not yours it's not yours any longer right it's not yours anymore so whatever happens you don't have control over it and I, I was so afraid of that <laughs> at the beginning because I didn't know how people was going to you know uh, understand how to work the 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 books or like how to read them or like how to just like you know navigate, yeah. navigate them yeah um so i don't know i will have to see i mean i do want to keep continue doing things like this that are like challenging I, I i like challenge um i i don't settle in that way i really like to keep finding new ways to like you know make the viewer try to like uh, reflect or understand what they're looking at. Uh, I guess I don't want to give things just easy in that way. Yeah, and I think the challenge yeah. is just that, right, of how the viewer um, interacts with what whatever they consider to be an art object, right? So we're used, exactly. To, being, exactly. We're used to being told, stay this far away, yeah. don't touch this, don't do this, so then I guess it's a matter of, as you continue in your practice, asking yourself, how do I give the viewer the, the go ahead, the green light to play, like to touch, to mm -hmm. interact, to 
you know, play, navigate these objects, you know, these, these books, these things, right? Because a book is created for that, it's created to be touched, to be open, exactly. to be read. So I guess it's finding, and it's, it, it's difficult. How do you have- and, But I, I, I feel like it's also very interesting, like what has happened with this, because the fact that some people are just afraid of opening it, that's already a reaction mm -hmm. to it, you know? Like, I feel like that's already a reaction that, that I didn't expect to hear and, and it happened. So it's just like different emotional responses to the piece that I feel like they're very interesting and they probably will help me to understand how I want to keep displaying my work in the future, right? Mm -hmm. This is like a little, I feel like every experience. exhibition, every work, every uh, uh, art project is like a little experiment that will help you with the next one. And um, that's how I feel. Um, I wanted to ask you about something you said before, and maybe it relates back to this idea of how you can interact with the work, but you called particularly your Aguasalada book, you call them silent books, which I think is so interesting because they're, they're, they have text mm -hmm. inside of them and they have like, so they have a voice mm -hmm. or multiple voices actually in, 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 in them. And you, I don't know, I feel like you feel that, that you feel like these voices, you feel like the depth or the emotion of these words. Um, so when you said like when you called them silent books, what did you what did you mean by that? Well, I the first book that I made was the one of the sea, and that's when I was start, started calling calling that specifically book the a silent book, because I mean the books again they the the colors are very opaque. There's nothing too exciting in that sense i mean I'm not, I'm not saying that they're not exciting but like but they're like very opaque it's it's a it has like this like heavy nostalgia yeah muted. They're well, like muted. they're very muted exactly and because of that word muted i was right. like they're not really like screaming out right to you and yeah when you read i mean you read but you're not reading out loud normally like you're reading to yourself so it's something that's happening happening in your head right in your conscience so in that sense for me it was like a very silent type of object um and also the the book Aguasalada um it has a lot of pages that only have some texture but they don't really have much information and it was also because I was working with the sea I wanted something that looked like re relaxed where you can only like where your eyes will be drawn to this like very calming. pastel colors, yeah, very calming. Uh, and then from there I was like, okay, maybe I'm just creating silent books, right? <laughs> <laughs> to kind of like make you reflect. Um, I don't know if the other ones are called silent book, but <laughs> well, but it was just an intimate response, uh, um, you know, between me and my artwork, I would say. Well, I'm, I'm not going to disagree <laughs> with you, <laughs> but I am going to say that it's, but for me, especially Agua Salada, you are, first of all, you're integrating uh, text or lines from Jose Marti's mm -hmm. I Hate the Sea, mm -hmm. which is very like, the language is strong. <laughs> you know, he hates something, so it's there. And then on top of that, you're not only integrating his line, like his text, but you're creating a conversation or a dialogue. So mm -hmm. he's you know, you're asking him questions in English and he's responding to you through his um, poem in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So not only are you creating a conversation and, cha and essentially changing the narrative um, by giving it a different context, but I, I don't know, it doesn't, in that respect, I, I guess it doesn't feel silent to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I find it interesting that that was the first book you did because you're working, the C represents this in-betweenness, but then you're working between two, you're using two languages, so yeah. you're in between yeah. languages. It's, exactly. Um, yeah, the Book of Cuba, it's all in Spanish. The Book of the Sea, as she said, it has uh, some questions that I ask in English, and then the responses are part of the poem of Jose Martí in Spanish. And then the Book of, in my, of Miami, it's all in English. To kind of like create this transition yeah, so I don't know. I just, in that respect, not to disagree <laughs> with you, but no, in that respect. Uh, I feel like uh, we as an artist, that sometimes when we're like working on something, if we don't have a title, 
we try to already put a, a, a name to the object or something, or at least that happens to me. And, and, and because I was working on that book and I was very like serene, like the, the way that I was working on it, but it was like only like a treatment of color sometimes. So there was not really that much noise with like images, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes you only have a page that only has like text. And for me, it was like, hey, this is very silent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll let, we'll let people visit and determine <laughs> <laughs> that for themselves. So um, could you tell us a little bit about how this particular installation relates, relates to your larger practice um, and maybe talk a little bit about other artworks that you're, that you're doing or you've done recently, mm -hmm. um, just so we have a little bit of context um, about your practice in, in general. I know some um, some people have been asking. Uh, so do you want me to share screen so you can show some images? Um, yeah, 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 that will be perfect. Okay. Um, so maybe we can start with... I'll let you navigate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds better. Alrighty, so here is your website. <laughs> this is my <laughs> website. <laughs> okay. So I think I want to talk about what I did. Oh, I'm sorry. This image here is yes. the installation from, from above. Exactly. So to the left-hand side, you have todo sigue igual. Um, and then the you know two elements of concrete that you found on the found on yeah. that you placed. Yeah, and you can't see it very well right now, but um, you had adhered this like thin layer of wax. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, it's actually transfer oh, images. Tra oh, yes. Yeah. Trans yes, sorry. Um, that kind of is peeling off a little bit. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, and then in the middle, in the center table, you have agua salada, um, and then in uh, to the right hand side, you have uh, alter alternate realities. Yeah, so, alternative realities. Yeah. And and then the sheet the sheet rock that we couldn't remember <laughs> the name of. <laughs> the drywall. The drywall. The the drywall. Right. <laughs> um. Um. Yeah, so I think I want to talk a little bit of what I did last year because I'm after this, well, in between, because I was still working in that case when I worked on those uh, works as well. Um, I was still working with concrete and that's something that I'm still like uh, practicing. Um, so I did um, this piece that is called POS and of course, as a pause, that's how it felt in quarantine. <laughs> um, so I was working, I was still exploring the, the concrete and I used paper again, um, some uh, personal text that I wrote during quarantine. Um, just as a, as a reflection of those, you know, weird times, even though we didn't have that much quarantine here in Miami, but, <laughs> but it was more talking about that um and then after this uh piece i um i did two more oh but i don't have this one here do you have the the pieces that we did here in, in the big box do you remember um images yeah i don't know i don't know if i didn't know okay well it's okay no worries guys there's more work <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me talk about this one. Um, this one is called a Blue Burst Tune, and it's actually um, um, a series that I did, and it's based on Emily Dickinson's poems. She's an American writer, um, and it was basically exploring material along with text. So um, I used some found objects, um, and then I kind of like arrange them uh, depending on the, the the text that I was like getting from her poems. And I basically use uh, for this one specifically envelope poems, which are like this like little sketch poems that she created personally and that she never really published. And they were actually found later by her sister. Um, and then they were published. Um, so the series is basically um, this, this series is actually based on, on a project that I did for school where I only could use uh, six uh, uh, letters. So that's how I would have to like work. I was limited in that sense. And then from there, um, I would like use objects that would kind of like convey 
the same message that I was trying uh, to do with the text taken from her poems. Um, but it, it still has like, it kind of intimate and they, they kind of look uh, like, uh, like personal objects. Um, I think like a memoir or something like that because they are encased in this like shadow box, right? Um, so from the work of graphic design, this is actually one of the last projects that I did, uh, or one of the first ones where I was exploring more text. And this is actually calendar, which is an artist book basically, because each page is super interactive. And this uh, work specifically was actually, I think, uh, um, like, was actually what inspired me to create the books for uh, Between Islands and Peninsulas. Um, so again, I was working with poems. Uh, this time I was working with the poems of um, Burden Rosenberg, which is another American writer. Not really that well known, I think. Um, uh, and, um, and then each page, depending on the month, I will select one of his poems, I will write it, and then I will try to convey again with interact, uh, in, uh, interactive things in the page and, and text, um, conveying whatever he was trying to, you know, uh, say in the text. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, there are things that you can take out or like reveal. I really like Stranger because it's like a book within a book. So it has this like little tiny book where you can like read more of the text. Um, and this one here, it's like a map. And uh, the, the poem, this poem was called Destination. So I was working with that, <laughs> which I think it links to the, the installation as well. Definitely. Yeah, right. <laughs> Oh, this one here, uh, I really love because it was it, it, it was um, working with memories as well. Um, the wish, which it was kind of like emptiness. It was working with emptiness. Um, Very detailed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a mirror. It's, there's a mirror in between. So the text is actually op uh, um, opposed, like you, you cannot read it because it's not really like facing you. I mean, there's a whole, um, sorry. <laughs> there's a whole game in the text about facing and not facing you. Uh, so I wanted to work with that. And, and what I did is I, I flipped the text. I reflected the, the wrong way. So when you look in the mirror, you can actually read the text. And speaking of mirrored substrates, you, you use that in alternative realities. Yes. So the yes. book expands out. Yes. Um, unlike the other ones that kind of read, you know, from right to left, um, it expands out. And then the final page has two almost imperceptible flaps. And when you open it, yeah. it's a mirrored substrate. And on the little flaps, it says, where is home? Exactly. So, you know, you're kind of playing with that idea of like your own reflection, finding home within yourself. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. yeah, like each book has its unique way of like interacting with it. Like the one of Cuba is like very hard to flip. You actually have to hold the pages to your left because it wants to wants to come back to its place basically. And then um, the one from uh, the sea is like very open because it's like a whole like platform, right? Mm -hmm. With the specs. And then the one of the Miami, just like it opens completely like in a whole full uh, square. Um, so, so yeah, I was working with, with very basically shape, right? Um, and the actual physicality of a book, of how we understand, but going further, what we understand that a book should be or should look like. I was trying to work with that. Uh, so. You wanna show um, as the last word yes. the, the artist book mm -hmm. that, that you um, created? So um, this is one of the artist books uh, that I, one of the first artist books that I created. It's like a manuscript, an illustrated manuscript basically. And it's, it has more illustration. It's not as uh, abstract or conceptual, I would say, than what you have seen recently. Um, I also do illustrations. So it's like a, a way for me to probably um, 
the stress myself. I don't know. Like, I feel like that also is tied up to the fact that I did engrave, uh, engraving, free making, and like I, I like to illustrate as well. Um, so this one is it. It kind of looks like a like a. I, I, I remember that Carol Todara. She's like, it looks like a children's book, kind of, because you have this name of a part of a body and then you are illustrating that in, in, recre in recreating it in a new way um so it's like parts of the human body and i have again like the head and the nose the eye so it, it kind of it's a little bit playful in that sense and there's like some references to probably uh what well, references probably not there are some references <laughs> to references to uh to like um uh, a painting, a really well-known painting, and then a film uh, <laughs> in history, uh, in art history. Um, and I, what I wanted to say is that this book, along with the print, it's going to be um, actually an exhibition, hopefully by Friday. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's going to be with the Exiles, uh, uh, Exiles books. Um, so <laughs> Exile being another um, nonprofit organization here yeah. in Miami. So you can come and view Amanda's work here at Bake House. Um, we are open on weekends from 12 to 5. Uh, you can touch the books and you can go through them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then she's also going to be um, exhibiting uh, with Exile in somewhere in Coral Gables, correct? It's in the, I think the Museum of Coral Gables. Yeah, um, and I believe the exhibition is called uh, Subtropical Affair. Subtropical Affair and it's through uh, a, a Good to Know um, which is like, like a group that creates exhibitions and they come here to Miami to create exhibitions. Yeah. Great. So I think that brings us into almost an hour. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we've talked a lot. Time flies. <laughs> um, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Um, a shout out to, um, all of Amanda's family that has joined us. <laughs> um, so thank you all for, for being here with us today. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me or Amanda and please come and see the books if you haven't, um, you won't regret it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. See you soon, thank you. Thank you, bye. <laughs>